Thanks for joining us for making the most of college tours. We're going to go ahead and get started. And um, we're so excited to have y'all join us today. And I want to welcome everyone. I'm Lisa Carlton. I'm the founder and CEO of College Matchpoint. And we are so happy, as Allison said, to have you with us. And um, a couple of housekeeping things. There is a Q&A box. Feel free to put questions in our Q&A. And we will be happy to answer those as we go along. Meredith um, Hendricks here on our screen will be our question answer today. And so, um, yes, we're looking forward to that. And so I need this, the slides, Allison, if you've got gotcha. them. Thanks. All right. So and yeah, we're... we'll be sending a recording out tomorrow via email. We're so excited to have you all join us today. So College Matchpoint has been working with students for 15 years, helping them with college admissions. And today, the reason that we like to do this um, webinar is that college tours are such an amazing opportunity for you to learn about colleges. And I think with some good preparation, they are even more enjoyable and even more importantly, they'll really help inform your college decision. So we're going to talk a little bit about the impact of the college list and how what that has on your college tours, the nuts and bolts of college tour planning making the most of those tours and demonstrated interest. So let's first start talking about how a balanced college list impacts your, how you decide where you're going to go as you plan these colleges, because this is really important as you think about your trip. It's always tempting to say, Actually, let's go to Boston and see Harvard, MIT, and um, one other very Tufts. So what we want to do is help you think that through so that when you make the investment to go on this trip, you're seeing a balance at, at, while you're in a location. So one of the things that we want you to do is to think about where your student is going to thrive and focus on not simply where they're going, but how they're going to do this, how they're going to do this thing called college. So it's very easy for all of us when we take off in the beginning stages of college tours, you know, and I think I look, think back to my first child, you know, we all do it. We kind of like, oh, we all go for those name brands. And so one of the things we want to help you do today is to think that through even a little bit more before we talk about the actual tours. So when we say the word balanced college list, what we're talking about is what, when your student ultimately applies to college, what does that college look like? So list look like. So first of all, uh, what's a reach? A reach is a school with 20% acceptance or less for anyone, okay? So that doesn't matter We out there if you're the 4.0 student, that's a reach for anybody, just probability. So you don't want to just be seeing reach schools. Now your possible list is gonna vary a little bit more, right? But the possibles are those in the middle that your student is most likely to be admitted to. The possible, the blue in our thinking is the place where you wanna be focusing a lot of your energy when you're first out exploring colleges, okay? And then your matches are those schools that the student is matches really well with and has a high likelihood of acceptance in. Your possibles are like you have a 50-50 chance of getting in if your possible list is properly matched to your student. Obviously, that's, you know, that's consultant by consultant with, but that gives you a little bit of an idea. So that's what a balanced college list looks like which means that's what a balanced college tours trip should also look like, okay? And that's one of the things we want to encourage you. As you, many of you know, and we're not, this not today's webinar, but college applications at 
have been increasing at a very high rate. And we are already seeing with our early data from this year that that trend is continuing. So what does that mean on list building? It means you need to go broader, which is actually a wonderful opportunity for students because as a society, we've gotten very fixated on a very small number of colleges, and yet we have thousands of colleges, wonderful colleges in this country. So it's actually an opportunity to expand that list a little bit and get, get a little bit broader. And so one of the things that, you know, people ask, why is this? Why are we seeing so many more applications? And one of the things that is impacting is that some majors are getting more, much more competitive, like business, engineering, computer science. Also, we're seeing that um, test optional policies really do add complexity to this process. And it's seeming like test optional is going to stay stick on the two coasts. In the middle of the country, especially in our southern states, you know, we see some southern schools going back to tests. Um, our Texas colleges have not done that yet. And I really hard to know what they'll do this year. Um, hopefully they will stay test optional. I think that gives a lot of great options, but this does impact the vast amount of applications and the application increase. So when you're building a, call, a balanced college list, you want to make sure that you've researched these colleges. This is so important before you take off on a trip because the trip is an investment, right? For your family, with your time, you're busy. So you want to make sure that you have researched the colleges before you go visit them. And then you kind of have a core list. And then ultimately, you know, later in the end of the junior year, a student's going to have a final list. So in the middle, it sometimes looks a little unwieldy. It can sometimes be longer. Um, but that's kind of how you, we go at it from starting to research colleges and say, OK, am I maybe interested in this? I don't know. And the good news right now is there's so many wonderful ways to research um, colleges because we have online info sessions, online tours. So there's a lot of great stuff out there. When you're doing this, you want to focus on your criteria. What do I mean by your criteria? What is it that's going to make it your student's college and not their best friend? What are the things in that college that are really going to be important to your student thriving and having success? Now, students often don't know this the first time we ask them this question because they've never been through this before. So part of our job is to help the student pull that out. And the great thing about your college trip is it's going to confirm a hypothesis or not, right? So our criteria in the beginning is a little bit of a hypothesis because remember that the student has never done this before. So we're on a new journey, but it's thinking about what do I want in college? What do I want the classroom to be like? What do I want the campus to be like? Who are my people? What are the kind of people I wanna learn from? How do I learn best? And this is oftentimes a little bit of a moving target. In other words, what a student thinks at the very beginning and as they go through this process often shifts and changes. That's a good thing. That means they're really doing the work and they're thinking about it. And the other thing that's happening on top of the college process is that students shift developmentally, right? And so what they thought when they were in the sophomore year and what they think at the end of junior year Oftentimes their, their perspective has changed some and that's healthy. It's one of the reasons we start this earlier. So there's room to kind of shift and change. Initial lists should have a breadth of options. Oftentimes we think, oh, a student either wants a big college or a medium college or a small college. Oftentimes there can be options in all those buckets that could fit a student. So try at the beginning to stay open especially if you're out there exploring colleges for the first time. If you're doing a first time college visit, make sure that you're going broad rather than getting too narrow too fast. Now, 
I think our philosophy has always been that students should drive the initial list, that students getting, having agency in this process and owning it really makes the difference all the way through the process. So not just on list, but through the whole thing. And it's a real indicator when a student can't do that. Now, there's certainly, you know, we're guides on the sides, parents are guides on the side. There's certain things that as parents, you know, you may want to put budget in there or whatever that are critical for your family. But a student exploring these colleges with a little bit of independence can be very, very, very helpful. And so it's crucial for, to let them have opinions, to let them ask for help, and to have allow for shifts and changes that are going to be natural. And it's crucial to build on a basis of possible schools. I think it's so easy and we all do it. We're in an, envi an environment where we all love luxury and the thing that you can't have. But with the increasing difficulty in college admissions it's not that we don't want to have reaches but it will not be hard to find the reaches i'm positive of that it takes a little more work to work at the possible so that's why why we're stressing that point as you as you work on your list that you're ultimately going to tour is that takes a little more research and takes a little more digging in awesome thank you lisa so now we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about <clears throat> the tours themselves, why they're important, and kind of how to go at them. But before we do that, Lisa, is it necessary for people to visit every college on their child's list? Oh, that's such a good question. No, it's not possible, and it would cost way too much. Um, so no. Now, there's some schools which we'll get to later in the presentation, where that visit might buy you more than other schools. That's called demonstrated interest. We'll talk about that a little later. I think if you're in the beginning stages, what you want to focus on is seeing some different types of places so that students can imagine what that might be like. Because you know, for many of our clients are based in Austin, Texas, we've, you know, or places where there are big colleges, LA, big colleges. So we, students often think that's what college is and that is one type of college. So I think what you wanna see is a variety when you start is it would be the goal. Exactly, so the goal isn't necessarily to visit every school. The goal is to bring the college process alive by actually getting on some campuses. Um, and it also helps, like Lisa said, the student can test their hypothesis, right? They, we've had, Lisa and I have both had this happen year after year. There will be a student that says, nope, I want the biggest school on the planet. Um, I, I don't mind 100 person classes. That is what I want. And they go on tours and they say, well, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I would like something a little smaller. Maybe that felt a little overwhelming. And the opposite is true. And also somewhere in, the middle. And one of the things I love about this process for students, which I love about all the things we do with students at College Matchpoint, it's an opportunity for the student to experience something, react to it, and reflect on it. And so that is a huge goal, which is why it, it can be a nice open-ended when you're figuring out where to go, which we're going to talk about in a minute. The main goal is giving them a lot of exposure, and really they're building the context of what college is right? They know what they've heard of. They know what their friends have talked about. They know maybe where their brothers and sisters or parents went, but now they're standing on a college campus and they're starting to realize that this is going to be something just for them. And um, so that's uh, that's such an important piece of this. Um, and sometimes it re they haven't done this before. It reveals priorities that they didn't know they had because they haven't done this before. Lots of times we'll have students go and realize, wow, I really thought I was gonna love NYU, but it's totally an urban campus and I don't know when I'm on and when I'm off. I actually don't like that very much, which they didn't know yet, right? Um, so having those experiences so they can literally react to how it felt for them um, reveals a ton of information for the student themselves, for the parents, for the consultants. Um, and, and 
Like, and we're, again, we're going to talk about demonstrated interest in a minute, but you know, ultimately families and students, you're a consumer. And this was a New York Times article featuring our very own Lisa Bain Carlton, um, where we talked about, where Lisa talked about, if you can want to make the most of that visit, you can look at what schools track demonstrated interest, but ultimately you want to try it on. Try on a school that you can to get your student the experience they need to really test their own criteria. Um, and as when we dive in and talk about demonstrated interest, we're going to talk about the tours themselves and how to make sure that you are on the radar of the schools that you visit. Lisa, anything to add here? No, I think that's exactly it. Um, for sure. Yeah. Perfect. As family, now I don't, what I don't want right now is anyone who isn't thinking about visits to feel like they broke it, that they are doing something wrong. No, this is just, it's out there when it comes times to visit. This is great to know. We know lots of families are planning visits, but each family does this as they need to and as works for them. And so if you have questions about specifically what's best and for your student and your family, please check with your consultant and you can talk through kind of how to individualize that. But kind of rules of thumb, as you're looking ahead to planning visits, definitely important to go and register online for official tours because especially on spring break and some of those three-day weekends that are coming up, they can fill up. Um, you can always cancel it if you can't make it but important to go ahead and, and sign up for those uh, official tours. And if it's possible, if you, I've had lots of students who where they had a cousin or a, an older student at their school that they knew was at that school, it can be so valuable to connect with a student at that school if you have those contacts. You can also reach out to admissions and say, hey, I'm gonna be on campus during X week. This is the student reaching out. And I'm really interested in biology. Is there a biology student I could talk to while I'm there? That way we can, you know, students connecting with students can be really powerful. And one of the things that has happened as a result of COVID is schools have really expanded the virtual resources that are available to explore their schools and their campuses. It's so important and so valuable to take advantage of those virtual resources before you go so you can concentrate your actual on-campus time to the, not the basics, right? To really diving into things that may not be part of that um, virtual info session. So virtual opportunities run the gamut, which is actually kind of a nice thing. This is a great way. And in fact, a lot of students research, researching schools will use these resources just to get a better sense. So not only are there virtual info sessions, these are where you sign up and it's a, a synchronous live opportunity where um, they're tracking and, and grabbing your email address that you sign up with. Um, there are other opportunities on college websites where you can take a, a virtual tour. Um, there might be some recorded sessions. There might be some, to, some student panels. Ultimately though, all of these resources are terrific. When we get to demonstrated interest, we're gonna talk about the ones where that will actually make an impact in terms of demonstrated interest. But in terms of exposure, all of the virtual, um, all of the virtual resources are really phenomenal to take advantage of. Um, okay, so as you're starting to think about, okay, all that is great, but where should we go? First of all, your student has developed or is developing a criteria of what they think is most important in the college they attend. Like Lisa said, this may be this may be something that changes, right? But initially, we want to get a sense of that from the student and try to try to honor that in in the visit, right? Um, in addition, it's great for students to research schools before the tour. A lot of times they rule it out and they can they can tell you, oh, that school is too small for me, or that school doesn't have the major that I'm really interested in exploring. And so that may be a way for your family to narrow down kind of what schools you visit. And most important, try to go where you can get variety, a variety in size, in focus, in admissions rate, liberal arts versus big state college. Um, ultimately, because you're 
developing that initial context for students. So it's great when you can visit a mid-sized school right before you visit a big school, right before you visit a small school, because then they really can get some tangible experiences where they can compare. Lisa, anything? No, I think um, also I would, the one thing I would also add to that is think about the location a little bit, because I do think sometimes there seems to be like a huge, like, let's all go to Boston, which Boston is amazing, but make sure that that's the area your student really thinks they might want to attend college in. So I think going back to that criteria a little bit can be really helpful. And I would say too, there are uh, there are some kind of some successful student tours um, may result in, I had a student last year who was positive, very excited about the possibility of going to school um, in New York, either New York City or New York State. And they visited in February and it was so cold. The student came back and said, you know what? <laughs> I'm from Texas and I did not realize what that meant and I am not interested. <laughs> so we were able to kind of shift directions, get all sorts of great info about other things he liked in the college, but had ruled out what um, something he hadn't had much experience with. So we would consider that a, a success story. Um, we encourage our students and families you can encourage your students to, to do some research before you go so that you can really um, plan and maximize the time you're spending on campus, right? Another great thing that can happen on tours, it is, I would say, lots of students are kind of up in the air about major, right? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm liberal arts, maybe business, I'm not sure. It can be a wonderful way to also test major interest by going to the specific schools going to the business school and then going to the engineering school because there is a difference, right? That student may realize something about um, that major in addition. Um, the other thing that can be so helpful is um, making sure that you write down the names of the admissions representatives for each college. Typically, these are regionally focused, so you can find the one for Texas or California, wherever you are. Um, in addition, it can be great to go into the admissions office and ask, are there any new programs that are coming up in the next year or two? Because a lot of times there are. Um, and that can all, that's always exciting to hear about. Um, and to have students research the area around campus again, so you can maximize when you're there, like, oh, there's that amazing museum or that amazing stadium. I want to make sure we see that while we're there. Again. Go online, schedule that official campus tour um, when you are making your plans so they don't fill up. Sometimes they'll have general tours and then departmental tours. Again, that can be a great way to dive in deep and um, also explore majors while you're there. So while there will be an official tour, um, which we recommend uh, that you sign up for officially and go on, in addition, it's so important to also just take some time just to be on the campus. Wander around, explore, eat in the cafeteria. This is really the part where going to college kind of comes alive, right? Where you can talk to your student about, can you believe it? Like in X number of months, you're gonna be at a place like this. Um, and if you can chat with current students, definitely take pictures. Sometimes there will be like a football game or a campus event that you can attend. Um, and I always tell students, if there's something important to you in your daily life, like you're a runner and you wanna make sure that there's lots of running trails, make sure you explore that while you're there because that's part of what brings you joy just in your daily life. If, if you work out every day and you wanna make sure there are weights to lift, go look at the gym. This will be your home. And so you wanna make sure it has the things, if you are, um, an athlete who wants to make sure there are club teams maybe that you participate in. All of that is a great opportunity to find out, find out while you're there. Um, and I had a student last year who had a, a, an interesting approach. She would sit in um, kind of just in the quad area, the open space, and watch people walk by and just try to decide if she, if they were people that maybe she thought she might want to have a conversation with. So it's really like figuring out like, 
do I fit? Do I feel comfortable? Am I curious? Do I feel, you know, at home? Um, and a lot of times they learn new criteria from this. Like, oh, I didn't realize how important it was that there is, that there are trees. I want to make sure there are lots of trees. Then they come back with that and we can make sure we kind of use that to inform the rest of the list that they built. Also super great and important to visit um, the career center where your student will be going when it comes time, believe it or not, to leave college and either look at opportunities or internships while they're there. So um, going to a school's career center is a great way to determine what kind of support they offer for um, professional experience for students, athletic facilities, um, and the student support or counseling office. Always great to visit that and you can really see how embedded um, it is in the life of the campus. And again, any other things that are important. If, you, if your student knows they really want to study abroad, go to the international office, talk about that. Um, uh, anything to add here, Lisa? No, I think um, just doing those extra things is going to make your tour a lot better. So you want to do the official tour, which remember part of that is marketing, right? And so then you want to do sort of your own exploration. And again, that's where each student's exploration is going to look a little different because what they're interested in is a little different. And as a parent who's been through this twice with my own students, it's always hard to remember that what I'm interested in and what my student is interested in might be two different things, right? And so kind of following their lead on this, even if you're like, what? You've never been interested <laughs> in X, Y, or Z. This may be the first time it comes up. So, um, so just kind of giving them that leeway because... For students, college tours can be anxiety producing. You know, they, they're they like around other students that aren't from their high school and they don't know how they're supposed to act. And this whole thing like college is really a lot. So letting them kind of have a little bit of choose their own adventure in addition to the official things is probably going to help the experience. Absolutely. And in all things, as your student allows, I have also raised teenagers, so I know that conversation is not always, um, but as your student allows for you to help them reflect, if they say they like it, I really like this school, tell me more. What, what about it really resonated with you? What about it made you feel like it was a place you could see yourself? Um, and all that reflection that they do while they're there ultimately is going to help them if it's a school that they apply to Ultimately, it's going to help them tell that story to the college because a lot of schools are going to ask them, why do you want to come to this school? So it's great to kind of start them thinking. And one of the things that's so important um, is not just do you like it, do you not like it, but how do you fit, right? What, Where is the alignment? Oh, this, this school has so many trees and I love nature. Nature is something that is so important to me. So I can, you know, we fit there, right? Or, oh my gosh, I love being in a city and this school actually has a class where I can go to all the museums as part of a class, right? And so looking at not just, do you like it, do you not like it, but how does that institution fit with your students? Sometimes students need to be reminded by parents about what's important to them too, because like Lisa said, it can be kind of, it can be kind of stressful when they first get into this environment. So you can also be the person that says, hey, you know, you love to run. Let's go check out the trails. And so, um, and talking to students sometimes is a little intimidating for um, high school students visiting. But if it is possible to talk to some of the students there about what they like, what they enjoy most about going there, that can be really helpful too. All right. Okay, so we have mentioned this word demonstrated interest a few times. And the further you get into this college process, the more we will be mentioning it because it's actually can be an important part of your admissions journey. Demonstrated interest is just how do you know 
that how's the college going to know that you are genuinely interested in this college okay and so versus uh, you know they just get your application your name hasn't come through in any of the things that they use to track students and they don't have any way of knowing if they said yes to you would you even be interested or did you just throw out an application, but you really don't know anything about their college, the values of that college. So this can be a really important part of the admissions process and is a, one of the things that helps you when you um, when you visit, you know, is, is that you are showing interest. Now, colleges are looking for students who are going to actually fit in their school, right? They can't let everyone in. So it's really important as you look at them that colleges are looking for just the right size freshman class, right? So they can't take too many, they can't take too few. And so figuring out where you as an applicant fit in there is really important. And so, you know, there's, uh, there's always this like, well, wait, how is this tracked? And I always kind of hate to do this slide because <laughs> I don't want to make everybody go crazy here. Okay. So like the colleges use, many of them use a system called slate. That's the most common. And so if you email them and some of your activity online, they can see, but by far, the largest way to show interest in a college that you're genuinely interested is a visit. And I would say second to that, now that we have all these online opportunities is the, you know, going to anything where you have to sign up to go. Uh, if you've put your name and your email on there, that's a win in the demonstrated interest category. The third place I would add is if they come to your school, which depending on your school, some schools have a lot, some schools don't have many, um, but that also is a way to show interest, but you're going to need to follow up in order to make that interest really stick. So this just shows you how a college and the system that they're using it, you do not need to start going on the college website every day or what, anything like that. What you want is to have shown a reasonable amount of genuine interest to the college that you're genuinely interested in. I always kind of explain this to students like dating. Like sometimes you got to make, you know, you, there, you, you want all these colleges to think that you're interested in them. That's not a good way to do dating, I might add, but it's just like <laughs> you want to show them all that that you care about them because they're trying to figure out on their side of the puzzle do who to let in, right? And so that's really how this works. And what this is one of the reasons that we stress so much, and no matter how much I stress it, people still seem to, I don't know, go another way, is when you just drive around on a college campus, number one, you're not, you're getting pretty much like a visual tour, which is one kind of like at the surface level. So you're not getting to dig into the college. And number two, you're not getting to show the college that you're there. Okay. Um, so when you, when you register, these things are actually showing up in their, um, in their system, which is what we would like to have happen. Um, and I think that is really important. I also do think that official visits have the opportunity to take you a little bit deeper into um, the college and what it offers. So again, this is just another graph showing how, how all of this is tracked, which the ultimate goal on the college's side of the table we have, you have a goal as a student in a family, are they gonna want me? What is What many people forget is that that exact same dance happens on the college's side. Is the student going to want us if we invite them to come here? And of course, one of the things that has happened in admissions as right now is that those are very sophisticated algorithms trying to figure that out, right? And an input in that is demonstrated interest. One of the things is that 
when if you are communicating with a college one of the things to do like if you follow up with an email or something is it's sort of what Allison was saying earlier being able to reflect on why this might be a good fit for me you make sure that you're you're saying that in the when you're communicating with the college okay because that's going to be really important um is not just i visited your college and i really liked it so that doesn't tell me much like i visited and i saw that you offered this and i'm already doing this and it would fit with that like in other words how do we fit how do we go together is really one of the critical pieces of demonstrated interest Now, how can you demonstrate interest? We're here today talking about college tours, but college tours is certainly not the only way that you can show demonstrated interest. You could email your rep. Now this has gotten a little out of control. So what I would say <laughs> is email your rep if you have a genuine question, okay? But just emailing like, hey, can you tell me if you have a psychology department when most every college has a psychology department, that's probably not going to win a lot of points. So if you have a genuine question, you also could email your rep after you visited the college and say, you know, email them and say what it was, why you thought that it was a fit for you. Obviously, if it's not, you don't need to do that. But if it was a fit, then that could be a good thing to do. As I've also said, a virtual session. If your school offers college visits, please utilize them. I cannot stress this enough. It is such a great way to learn about colleges. Oftentimes you're meeting the rep who's ultimately going to read your application. Um, and it's just a phenomenal way. I know at some schools, it is really hard to do this because it conflicts with other things that you need to be doing, such as going to class. So I hear this from my students a lot. So yes. I understand yes. that that's not always possible for you, but if it is, you want to do it. Some schools, not a lot of schools offer the, you know, the interviews on campus as much anymore, except those really small ones. But if you are going to a school that where that's a possibility, or sometimes they say it more casually, like just meet an admissions person, take them up on it because this is a chance for you to specifically ask your questions and learn. Again, it's a two-way street. They're trying to get you interested in their college and learn about you. So this is a great way for you to learn more about the college and dig even deeper into, is this feel like a fit for me? Another way on that college tour is if you can attend a class, this cannot happen at a lot of schools, but it can happen at some. And if it is possible, you're gonna learn so much by attending a class. How engaged are the other students? Are they asking questions or are they just on their phone? Are they, is there, is there group discussion or is it all lecture? You know, there's just a lot of things that you can learn. Another way to show interest is to say yes to alumni interviews, say yes to the mailing list. And then as Allison said, um, you know, you want to also explore your personal interests. So for example, you know, I have a golf student and he's in touch with the um, club coach for golf because he's going to, he wants to do the club route. Musician, you know, I've got this fantastic guitarist. And so he's been talking to the music department. So you do also, the further you go in on these tours, the more you're going to come out with. And what I want to stress here and this is off of demonstrated interest for a second, sorry, is that your trip isn't just a binary, yes, I liked it, no, it isn't. That's not the goal of it. It's what did I like in certain places and what didn't I like so that you then can expand the rest of your college list off of those visits. Okay, tangent over. <laughs> well, and to think about, again, um, I know it is an intimidating experience because college, uh, High school students will arrive on campus and they'll think, oh no, right? Like, like is now now I have to worry about will I get in, which is a natural human experience, right? But at the same time, we want to help students expand that a little bit and think about, but where will you thrive? Like, what are the circumstances where you will not just get in? But where will you, as a human being who's going to live here for four years, 
thrive, right? And so I know when I visited with my own child who's visiting schools, I would have to remind him, you're going to be here for four years. That's a lot of winters in Cleveland, right? It's like, let's think <laughs> about that. <laughs> so, um, and, and we, there's so many other reasons that we love for students to apply early, but applying early is also a great way to demonstrate interest to schools because it shows that they're so important to you that you got everything out of the way early. And so that is super helpful. Um, and it go, of course, applying early, we'll talk about that later in another webinar, goes beyond demonstrated interest and it can just be really good for kids. Um, the other thing about demonstrated interest is it's something students are in charge of. Mm something that students are in charge of. So it's the student emailing the college rep, not their parents. Now they may need some help, right? Kind of framing it, right? Consultants are here for that too. How do I find my rep? What should it say? It's a great, great experience in developing those communication skills that are gonna help them thrive when they get to college. Um, and it's fine for families to join a virtual info session together, that's fine. Um, but the communication and the initiation of all of the communication should come from the student themselves. Um, the student should be the person that goes into the admissions office and says, hi, I'm here from LA and I wanted to see if John person was in, in so I could meet him while I'm here, right? The student does that. Um, it's great for the student to do. Also speaks to the college themselves about what an independent uh, student who takes initiative, this person is. Okay. And that kind of goes to what Allison just said in terms of be your best. So this is a new realm for students. You know, so for some students, this learning to communicate at a little more professional level, um, sometimes the first place to start here, which we don't have on the list, is to check the name of your email. If it's not professional, you may want to get a new one. Um, but you want to be polite. You want to use mature language. It doesn't have to be super formal, but just polite and, you know, grammatically correct and all those things. Be considerate of someone's time. And this is where like if you start emailing them every day or every week or something, you are not actually respecting their time make sure that you also have done a little research before you ask a question, okay? That's really important. And then be curious, what is it you really need to know to make an informed decision about the school? So this is true in all college admissions. Digging in a little deeper and reflecting on what is it I really wanna know versus the very first thing that comes to your mind is going to help you be a better candidate in this process because an underlying theme that I think we've said a couple of times of college admissions is that ability to reflect, okay? So, you know, what is it I really need from this person? And honestly, if you have a really good, you know, um, significant question that you, that you need to know, someone is really interested in answering it. I mean, admissions officers are in these jobs because they want to help students, right? So, but make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and that you're always polite and just check it. I mean, sometimes I read these and I'm like, oh no, oh no. So just make sure that you check it or you have someone else check it unless, you know, writing emails that you're like fantastic at that. And the other thing um, I think that is super helpful for students to remember is that admissions reps, I think students, this always surprises my students when I talk to them. Admissions reps are closer to their age than mine. Admissions <laughs> reps, they, they imagine a lot of times like some professor, right? So, or some iconic, like some, some uh, you know, they figure like it's somebody older who, you know, maybe works in the department that they want to apply. Admissions reps, not, not necessarily. And in fact, more often than not, are closer to the student's age um, and they love kids. That's why they do it, right? They tend to be easy to talk to. They tend to be fun and polite. They know what TikTok is. You can, you can engage with them, um, which always makes it just a little less intimidating when you think about writing that email. And I always tell students, don't ask a question that you could have found the answer on the website. If you have a question, 
research and make sure it's not on the website because that is not the impression you want to leave <laughs> with, the, with the admissions rep. What to do if you make a mistake? What mistakes do students make, right? Here's what I would say. The biggest mistake I see students making is only showing interest to their reach schools. Um, I think that is, in the environment that we are in in college admissions right now, that is a really big mistake. Um, the second would be not if it, attending, if you're out on campus, is not attending the official things where you're actually giving your email. And um, then I would say parents rather than students showing the interest. It is really important, parents, that your student, even if it's uncomfortable, that doesn't mean you can't support, is taking some lead here because they're ultimately not taking you to college with them. And, and I know that is, that's a whole nother thing that is sad, but um, we do want them to lean into their budding independence in this. Um, I think the other thing that is often a mistake is when students leave out the hell, the kind of the human element, the story. And um, so those I think are things that can be mistakes. Um, remember that, you know, from the first person you meet in the admissions office, just be yourself. Not that that person's going to have any impact on whether you ever get in that college, but this is an exploration that you're on. And so treat it as such. Absolutely. And how parents can help. We've talked about supporting and encouraging and coaching your child, right? The other thing we'll talk about later, but I like to say it now, the other way you can show interest is once you've applied, open those student portals. You're going to hear me say that again a lot in about, you know, in a couple of years, depending on where you are in the process. Um, but uh, parents, number one, um, engaging students in that exciting conversation about exploring colleges, right? And hey, let's take some time together to dive into this and explore, right? Um, sometimes students need some coaching, some guidance to focus on those possible schools. It doesn't mean you can't visit a REACH school, but our rule of thumb is for every REACH school you visit, visit at least two possibles, right? That way students are, because a lot of times a possible school, remember possibles are those where the students right in that middle, right in that middle 50%, it's got an admit rate um, of, you know, 35 to 50. Those schools, the student may not know as much about. Maybe they've heard of them, maybe they haven't. One of the reasons to focus on some possible schools when you visit is a lot of times they need to get to know them because they might not have heard of them. Um, and of course, the whole thing that we're talking about, taking students on visits, participate in, in virtual visits, but this next one, and I will say from personal experience, definitely easier said than done, um, but listen to the students' reactions about the schools prior to sharing yours. We know, obviously, you have an opinion and that opinion matters, but this is your student's first opportunity to explore something that they don't know about yet, and so let them share that the number one reason they want to come there is the dorms. It's going to be okay. They are going to, there's going to be other things, but but they get to have that. If they connect with something, let them share that reaction. Or if they don't like something, we absolutely let them share. And well, this can be challenging, so important upfront to be honest about finances or deal breakers. I know that they are. there are several families I have worked with that are very clear that there are some schools in the South based on the passion for UT Longhorns that are deal breakers, <laughs> right? And so that that's those are important conversations to have. And honestly, what, what are the financial parameters? It's difficult. It may be challenging, but it's so important that students know that um, going in um, so that they know kind of exactly what to expect from the very start. And one thing I would add here is when you're listening to your students' reactions, I hear this a lot when I meet with families where it's like, but I never, I've never heard you interested in that, or that never mattered. This is a whole new journey. So they may kind of like go in one direction and then go in another direction. That is part of exploring anything. And so, um, you know, just 
giving them a little room here to explore this is going to help this journey. And what we know, because we've had the joy of working with students for so long, is they usually kind of find their way back to the middle of like where, where, what would work for them. So, you know, if they, if they have some kind of, you know, ideas that you're like, where did that come from? Just kind of let it, let it, let it percolate a little bit because, you know, I'm a parent, I get it. We all want to jump in and go, what? So, and, but that's not always super helpful. Especially at the beginning, right? So you're kind right. of all going in exploring together it doesn't mean later you can't a style I had a, I've had you know parents have great insight about what's important to their kiddos but in the especially if this is your first time visiting campuses just we we have a parent pledge which I will say I took myself when I took my son on college visits and I literally at one particular school that will re remain nameless I literally had to like do this for a minute because I had so many opinions um, because I thought it was perfect for him. And if I had said it, he probably would have never applied. <laughs> so, um, so it, and you know, doesn't mean that you can't keep that information and share it later. Okay. Doesn't mean that your opinion doesn't matter. It totally does. We just want to give students a little space here to explore. And just like in all things, right? Perfect is the enemy of good. Expecting that this college list, this college visit, this trip, will be perfect, um, can really set everybody up for um, some extra challenges. So the being curious about what you will find out and what you will explore is a great way um, to start this process. Um, and know that this is just the beginning, right? This process does take twists and turns. The other thing that happens along the way, kids grow up. And so when they were sophomores, all they cared about was Greek life. But but now that they're juniors, they realize, no, you know what? I really want to make sure that they have a study abroad program to Dubai because that's really important to me. So don't worry. It all comes around. Um, and giving them the space to explore is always helpful. Options are the goal. Not There's not one perfect school there's lots of places where this student will thrive. We firmly, deeply believe that. And we want students to get to discover that about themselves. And that's something that parents can definitely talk about. Yes, you love this school. I wonder what other schools that you'll love once you do, you know, when we do more business or once we do some more research. And one of the things I want to say here is that these college visits are such, you know, I've, I've got a 30 year old and a 36 year old. And, you know, I think about how great the trips were with both of them. Something that I look fondly back on today. These can be stressful or they can be a whole lot of fun. I think both of my kids, they were both a little bit in the middle, right? Some days they were stressful and some days they were fun. But one of the things is enjoy this. It's an adventure for all of you. And so um, this is about your student's future. It's all going to work out. As Allison said, we're at the very beginning. And so I think also as much as you guys can, as a family, if there's certain things y'all already like or like to eat or like to do, like you don't have to be so rigid about this that you don't also have some fun and enjoy it because it's a little stressful for everybody. You're thinking about your child leaving your nest, which is really a hard concept, especially with your first child going through this. And so whatever things you can do to, you know, my oldest daughter and I went to this crazy concert at Connecticut College years ago. And, and I mean, we still laugh about it today, you know? So, so like if there's things going on campus or whatever, you know, allowing yourself to go and be a part of those and, and just have some fun with this, I think that is going to ease some of the the kind of anxiety that can sometimes go on in, in college, the first kind of dipping your toe into college visits. Exactly. And um, to just remind your student that ultimately there's going to be so many places where they can thrive because it can be, you know, it can be a little intimidating. The other pro tip, and I'm I'm stealing this from one of my colleagues, Julie Ritchie, um, who's not here today, but you may see her in other webinars. When you get on a campus, 
take a picture of something that has the name of the college on it. And then you'll know that all the pictures behind that are from that college. And then do the same one on the next one. You think you won't forget that this was that this particular fountain was at this college and this particular library was at another, but you will. And so getting making sure you take pictures and delineate kind of where they came from. I had another student who um, uh, just talked into her phone at the end of every tour that she did what three things she liked, three things she didn't, so she wouldn't forget. Um, and then she just had that voice memo, right? And she thought it was a stupid idea when I brought it up. And when we wrote those essays, she was so happy she had it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, obviously this is a big topic. There's lots to think about. Your College Match Point consultant is here for you and your student to figure all this out um, so that you can, um, you know, find a time and places that work for you. Don't hesitate to reach out. In the um, in the follow-up, we're going to send our guide to campus tours along with this recording and along with our slide deck. But please don't hesitate to reach out to your students' consultant if you have other questions. Um, it's likely that you might. We have a couple of things that are coming up we wanted to point out. Um, we do have uh, a webinar coming up on March 3rd all about college admissions at highly selective colleges. So we we leaned into that just a little bit in this one, but that webinar will be all about kind of how it works, what to expect. Um, and then we have an amazing database of um, summer program, I think over 900 now opportunities um, for students at our summer match point site. Um, please definitely check that out as it's time to think about, believe it or not, what's happening this summer. Um, and uh, we'll be sending along our guide to researching colleges and our guide to exploring college majors for you. We thank you all so much for joining us. If you're in Austin, it's a beautiful afternoon, so extra points for skipping out on some beautiful weather. Um, we so appreciate y'all spending time with us, and we hope you have the most fun uh, with your students on your college tours. Thank you.